Hello everyone, how are you? This is Rizwan Mania and welcome to my orientation for ACCA Performance Management for December 2023. I welcome you all to WIFI, which is Virtual Institute for Higher Education. WIFI is a gold ALP, uh, approved learning partner of ACCA. And we are providing ACCA classes since 2017 to ACCA students and that too globally. We operate in 100 plus countries where we offer all the ACCA courses uh, to the students and we have outstanding results as far as student uh, passing ratio is concerned. Along with that, the most important thing is the uh, positions that our students manage to bring in different papers. So on an average, in every attempt, uh, our students bring nationwide positions uh, in different parts of the world. So now I hope you all uh, will enjoy your journey with WIFI and my performance management. So let's begin with the today's session first. This is the orientation for performance management. Uh, and in this orientation, I'll be discussing about the paper, what the paper is, uh, how I'm going to teach you the paper, what are the important things to consider, what are the things that you should keep in your mind, how to prepare yourself. Obviously, here I will be uh, giving idea to two groups of students. One are those who are already part of my batch, who are already enrolled right now. And one would be those who are still thinking whether we have to join WIFI, whether we should opt for PM or not. So the idea that I'm going to give you today will give you exact idea how to pursue things. Now, before I move on, this is my experience. I have been teaching ACCA papers since more than 14 years. My area of expertise includes performance management, financial management, and advanced performance management. I have taught more than 6,000 students locally and internationally if you combine all those students. And yes, I have been part of ACCA uh, P2P. Uh, you know, very famous brand of ACCA. Uh, through this brand, we used to offer webinars to ACCA students globally. So I've conducted eight performance management webinars for ACCA Pakistan and six for advanced performance management. Other than that, every quarter we offer free webinars to our students, free revision webinars to our students from our own WIFI's platform. So this is about myself. You have seen that. Now moving towards, uh, this is my WhatsApp number for any problem issues, you can contact me as I am also uh, running WIFI as a CEO for any questions, any problem. If you need to discuss, you can contact me at this number and I can uh, uh, help you in terms of whatever problem you have. So please just note down the number. Now, after that, let's begin with the paper. What performance management is and what is your position in this paper? So do Keep this in your mind that you are a management accountant. Yes, your position in this paper is of a management accountant. You might be called as Peter. You might be called as Ahmed, Aisha, uh, whatever your names are. But for this paper, what mindset is important is that you are a management accountant. All of you who are going into examination, you would not be recognized by your names. In fact, examiner will see, okay, so many management accountants are coming in the examination, which means you have to demonstrate yourself as a management accountant. Now, what a management accountant does and what is that base paper where the base was made for this paper? So you know, you know your initial paper known as management accounting, MA. From that paper, the bases were there. The bases were already established for you people. And this is an advanced paper where those bases will really uh, be used in terms of fulfilling the expectation of the paper. So what are the key things that you must do that you must be aware of? 
number one is planning yes you need to be very good in terms of planning as a management accountant he is a person who plan forecast for the business and he's a person who is working internally to the organization so he is a person who is preparing budgets preparing the forecast preparing uh, different types of estimation for the organization so planning is the word which is very crucial for a management accountant and the basis of that were already introduced and established at your previous examination second work that a management accountant does is decision making now you might be thinking what did you covered earlier in relation to decision making so just recall just recall there was a topic by the name of marginal costing yes using marginal costing you used to take decisions so using marginal costing we used to take decisions and the decision making ability basically is important for a management accountant so we expect you to have same uh, ability in pm as well then third is performance evaluation i'll just i'll just leave this for a minute and we'll come to control this is another very familiar term that you are aware about controlling what controlling means management accountant is a person who control the results by comparing actual with the budgets so the budgets that you made at the planning stage you compare those with the actual result and the difference is known as variance the difference is basically one that gives you the idea that we have to control we have to improve our performance so yeah if i say these three terms planning decision making and controlling are those three terms that you are already aware of i don't have to introduce these uh, terms right now and you are not new to these terms but the term which is very important here is performance evaluation yes come on my friends it's what performance evaluation now this is a unique term this is a very important term in fact for me i would say this is the most important area of this paper performance management now what is the name of the paper come on the name of the paper is performance management and what this basically word is evaluation performance evaluation which means now at this level you are not just required to do planning take decisions or control the results you have to evaluate the performance of the organization yes it's one step ahead of what you used to do earlier now when i say what performance evaluation means you have to check whether organization performance is good or not whether the departments working in the organization how their performance is similarly the managers the managers who are working in the organization how they are performing which means we have to evaluate we have to check whether the overall organization is performing well or not whether the organization is working towards its goals its objectives its mission or not so that is one very additional role that have been introduced at this level and it does have a good amount of wastage good amount of weightage in your examination so my friends now if i say management accountant so four things should come in your mind come on everyone i want everybody to write in the chat box so what are those four things write with me planning say come on planning number 2 decision making number 3 controlling number 4 performance evaluation right so these are the four things that you are required to do in this examination okay everyone are you with me say yes or no <coughs> right i want everybody to be energetic everybody should respond in the chat box we have to make this interactive this is how i teach this is what we follow at wefi so we want everybody to remain energetic and interactive during every of our live sessions okay great so four things are expected now from you people planning controlling decision making and performance evaluation so let's move ahead and see what we have in our next slide so the syllabus is basically 
<coughs> divided into four areas. Now, these are the four core areas of your paper. First is specialist costing and management accounting techniques. I will give you the details of this section. After that, you have decision making. After that, you have budgeting and control. And then you have performance management and control. Okay, so these are the broad four areas of your syllabus. And now we will uh, dive into these areas to see uh, what exactly comes under these areas. So if you see in this next slide, this is a very well organized slide, which will give you lot of idea about the paper itself and the topics in the paper. So first thing I need to start with is the paper pattern. Yes, what I'm saying, paper pattern. So listen, my friends, your paper will be of 100 marks. That's great. This will be of 100 marks. How many sections will there be in your paper? So there'll be three sections. One is known as section A, section A. Second is known as section B. And third is known as section C. So first is section A, then it's section B, and third is section C, which means three separate areas you have to target in your examination, right? Now, I assume here that you all obviously must have done your previous paper of management accounting, your knowledge module, so you know what type of questions are tested in knowledge module. So basically, I want to, I want to ensure a proper transition from this knowledge module to this skill module and the first paper you have is F5. So my friends, the first section known as section A. Now this section comprises of 15 questions, 15 questions. Now what we call these 15 questions as? We call these 15 questions as OTs. What OT stand for? Objective test questions. Objective test questions. So 15 OTs will be tested in this section A. Let me give you the idea about these uh, 15 OTs. So there are these OTs are characterized or categorized, I would say, into seven types. There are seven types of OTs that can come in the examination. Seven types of OTs. The first is very familiar and your most favorite one, let me introduce, and that is MCQ, multiple choice questions. Multiple choice questions. This is a very common uh, type of a question where there are four options given, you have to select one. Out of four, select one. Simple, you are very much familiar with this as well. Second is multiple response. Second is multiple response. Now what multiple response is? Multiple response means that there are more than four statements. Maybe five, maybe six, maybe seven, maybe eight statements. So if there are five statements or six statements or seven statements, your answer, uh, you, the answers that you are looking for in those seven or eight statements, uh, it, it will be more than one answer. Two statements, maybe three are the correct ones, maybe four are the correct ones, maybe five are the correct ones, maybe all of them are correct ones. These are known as multiple responses. Now here, I want you to keep this in your mind. This is one area where students struggle in the examination. Why? Because now they have to come up with more than one correct answer. In MCQs, sometimes we have the option to guess, right? We can do something evil and come up with the answer, but not here. Here you need to come up with two, three, or four, whatever the right statements are. So here you really need to be good and how you will be covering these, this is what I will be telling you. It's my responsibility from today. Your paper is my responsibility. What to do is my responsibility. I will tell you what are the plans, what needs to be done, what not needs to be done, and this is, you have to follow simply, okay? So multiple response is clear. More than one correct answers. Then comes drop down, very much simple. You have a button there, you click that button of drop down. There are options available, you have to select that option. Very much similar to MCQ. I say sister of MCQ is drop down list. Twin sister. 
then you have hot area question what is hot area hot area question is a one where there are what can i say more than one uh, more than one uh, correct answers obviously it's 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 like a true and false game like a true and false area where there are correct statements uh, there are statements that are not correct uh, so true statements false statements that you have to determine okay then you have hot spot area now what is hot spot questions uh, it is very much relevant for performance management maybe a graph will be given to you and in that graph you have to spot or come up to the right area or uh, a right area where the answer exists right then you have fill in the blanks now fill in the blank is the biggest enemy of performance management students why because this is a calculative area because questions will come in relation to this area but the question is why is this a biggest enemy is because it is not just an mcq which means you cannot guess you cannot look at the options and work back the answer no your answer should be dead right <coughs> whatever calculations you are doing your answer should be dead right which means you have to follow the decimal policies as well yes in your paper you need to round off to two decimals or three decimals or four decimals please follow the instructions if you will not follow the instructions this means you will not be able to uh, uh, get complete two marks in fact when i say two marks so either you get two or you get zero you have to make your answer perfectly correct to get those two marks so this is very important to note down and known as hot spot area sorry uh, fill in the blanks then we have drag and drop now whenever i, I <coughs> whenever i see a drag and drop it gives me uh, uh, a a flashback of my school days where we used to play a game like match the following if you remember from here from here and from here we need to match these so these are known as drag and drop so my friends these are 15 types of ot's 15 types of ot's 15 types of ot's that will be tested in section a of your paper coming back to this slide is this clear everyone yes or no kindly confirm in the chat box <coughs> Yes, guys, are you all following me? Just write in the chat box. Okay, okay, let me give you the idea. These are seven types of OTs. Okay, these are seven types of OTs, but 15 questions will come in the paper, which means maybe three MCQ based, two multiple response, three fill in the blanks, four drag and drop, something like that. Okay, so it would be a combination uh, of these seven but 15 questions will come uh, in relation to these OTs, okay? <clears throat> just a minute, guys, just a minute. Uh, I need to take a small, short pause here. Just a minute, be with me. Don't go, I'm coming back in few minutes, just few minutes. Okay, coming back to this slide. So my friends, uh, I'm sure this is clear now. There are 15 OTs that will come in your paper. Uh, and it could be multiple response or MCQs or whatever the seven categories are that, that I gave you the idea about. Now what each OT has a weightage for in terms of marks. So that's 15 into 2 makes 30 marks. Okay, so it has a weightage of 30 marks in your paper, right? Then comes section B. Now what section B is? Section B again are OTs. But the difference in section B is that there will be three questions of 10 marks each. Three questions of 10 marks each. Okay. Now, one question which is of 10 marks, this will include a scenario, a case study. And with that case study, there will be five OTs that will be attached to it. Okay. One case study, five OTs. And when I say OTs, those seven types, those seven types should come in your mind, okay? So there'll be one case study with five OTs connected to that case study, which, which means every OT will have a weightage of two marks, five into two makes 10. So again, the, 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 the question will be of 10 marks, right? But the difference is that these are not the isolated OTs. These are basically 
those OTs that are related to a case study, which means now it is very important for my students to read the case study very, very thoroughly because these questions are actually connected with the case study. So this will be one question of 10 marks, then another question similar to this will come for 10 marks and third also will be for 10 marks, which means 10 marks, 10 marks, 10 marks, make 30 marks for section B. Section B, effectively if we say, again these are OT based questions, seven types of OTs, but with scenarios. So three scenarios, having a weightage of 10 marks each makes 30. These are the isolated, separate 15 OTs having a weightage of 30 marks. This 30 and this 30 makes at 60. So 60 marks relates to objective test questions. Objective test questions, 60 marks. Which means student needs to realize this fact that you must be really good in objective test questions. Whether it's MCQ, whether it's a multiple response, fill in the blank, drag and drop, drop down, uh, hot spot, hot area questions, whatever you need to be really good in these 60 marks. Now comes the third area which is which requires a total different skill set and that is known as constructive response area. Now the by the word it is very clear constructive constructive response area which means you have to construct your answer. This is that area where you have to construct your answer and how you're going to construct your answer. So here there are two important tools that you have to use. One is the spreadsheet tool and second is word processing tool. Now what is spreadsheet? Very much familiar with Microsoft Excel? Yes, you are. If you are familiar with, with Microsoft Excel, so spreadsheet is similar to that, which means in this area, we need to do all the calculations, we need to perform all the workings, all the calculators on that spreadsheet, which means Sir, can we use calculators? The answer is a big no. Using calculator in that case is a big sin that you'll be doing. You'll be committing a big sin. So make sure that you don't use any sort of calculators in section C area of spreadsheet. I will show you, I'll explain you, I'll teach you, I'll guide you how to present the answer on spreadsheet how to input the formulas if you don't have idea about it. Don't worry, that is my job, my responsibility. Secondly, word processor uh, is an is a area where you have to type the answers. Yes, typing. <coughs> I know you are excellent when it comes to cell phone typing. I know you are so good and you can type even without looking at the keyboard when it comes to your own cell phone, yeah? I tried this few days back when my screen was not working well and I tried that so it was possible because if your hands are automatically adjusted with that keyboard, you can still type. But my friends, unfortunately, this option is not available when it comes to your ACC examination. You have to type using a keyboard and which means your practice Typing on a keyboard will matter. It is very important that you type properly on the keyboard. And that typing should be very uh, much, I'm not saying I need very fast typing. It should be a normal speed, at least in order to complete your paper. Now, if you are not good in terms of typing, which means what you have to do, nothing to worry about. From today, start typing any articles of your own choice. Anything that you want to type, if you want to send someone a letter, I'm not going into the details of that letter. Maybe if you want to send someone a message, I don't know what kind of message that is, but type, type, and type, it will improve your typing speed. So that is the area where typing is needed, and this is known as CRQs, constructive response questions. Two questions will come in the paper, and each will have a weightage of 20 marks. So that is two into 20. 2 into 20 makes 40 marks, relates to CRQs, 40 marks relates to constructive response area where we have to construct the answers. We have, we have to 
construct the answers and the weightage of that is 40 marks. So this means it is very important to prepare ourselves for 60 marks of OTs and 40 marks of CRQs and all this will be done with me. Don't worry, we will work as a team because you know what team means? Together, everyone achieves more. So we'll achieve more by working together. Now, having said that, these are the three areas of the paper. Now I'm coming to the syllabus area that your paper uh, includes. The first section is advanced costing technique. Or I can even call this as uh, specialist cost accounting techniques. Now this topic is comparatively easy for you. So you might be thinking why? This is easy for you because it has a strong connection with the topics that you have covered in your previous paper of MA and those topics include ABC activity based costing. which is an alternative of absorption costing, okay? So ABC versus absorption costing. Second topic that comes under this area is target costing. Uh, again, you are familiar with this term of target costing. Target costing uh, is a modern technique similar to ABC, but target costing has a clash with uh, the traditional technique known as cost plus pricing. Third, life cycle costing. Uh, you again are aware of this term life cycle costing because of MA. Then comes throughput accounting. You are not aware of this term throughput accounting. This comes under uh, this section. But let me tell you, throughput again is a modern technique and it has a conflict uh, with your traditional technique that you have covered in your previous paper. And the name of that is marginal costing marginal costing. So see, this first section is more or less a fight between modern techniques and traditional techniques. When I say this, I can further give you the examples like ABC versus absorption costing, like target costing versus cost plus pricing, like marginal costing versus throughput accounting, which means in this section, you will be basically understanding and comparing the modern technique and the traditional manufacturing techniques. The other thing that comes under this area is known as environmental management accounting. You are not aware of this. So these five topics basically comes under this first section. I call this as a section of conflicts between traditional techniques and modern techniques. Then you have budgets. Again, it has a strong foundation coming up from your MA paper. You have gone through budgets in your MA paper. If, if I give you the names of those budgets, like you have an idea of fixed budget, you have at least heard about flexible budget, raw uh, uh, sales budget, production budget, raw material usage budget, purchase budget, labor budget, overhead budget. So you are aware of these budgets, right? So at PM level, you obviously have to go one step ahead. Now, you're not expected to uh, make sales budget, production, raw material purchase, usage, labor, or overheads budget because these are known as functional budgets, but you are expected to have a knowledge uh, of fixed budget, flexible budget, and there are four new budgets that will be introduced here by the name of incremental budget, zero based budget, rolling budget and activity based budget. So this is basically area of budgeting where you will be going one step ahead compared to your previous paper. But the interesting part here is what? The interesting part here is what? Is the theoretical aspect that have now been introduced here. Remember performance management is not like MA. In MA it was about manipulation of the data. It, what, it was about finding out the uh, numbers, calculating the numbers, and it was about manipulation of the data. But in PM level, at PM level, I should say that it's, it's not about number calculation, 
in fact there is a very key term that I'm telling you now and that is what the numbers mean what the numbers mean now I will further explain this when I move towards variance for example again variance is, is one area that you have covered in your earlier studies you know the basic variances that you have covered in your uh, previous MA paper were price variance, material price, material usage, labor rate, labor efficiency, idle time, variable overhead, uh, efficiency, variable overhead expenditure variance, fixed overhead expenditure variance, fixed overhead volume variance, sales price variance and sales volume contribution variance. Now, it was a long list of variances that you have covered earlier in your MA paper. Correct guys? Hello, are you with me? Yes? So. <clears throat> variances is what you used to calculate at your previous examination. Now, for example, there is a material price variance of 1000 adverse. So at PM level, the expectation is not just to calculate the variance, but as I said, what the numbers mean, what this 1000 adverse means, you have to explain what this 1000 adverse means. And you have to come to the reasons why this variance came and who is responsible and how the performance of the manager is <laughs> represented by this variance. This means it's more about explaining the numbers. It's not just calculating the numbers. It is more and more and more about explanation, which means the involvement of theoretical part automatically comes into this paper. So my friends, we will be dealing with these things. I will teach you how to draft the theory. I will teach you how to present the answer. It is my responsibility. Once again, I'm saying that you have to follow the plans. If you follow the plans, not just you will be good in your calculations, but you will also be good in your narrative side and the theoretical side. So my friends, variance is about explaining the numbers. So this is variances. Now, sir, what do you think? Are those previous variances is what we have to recall here? No, no. There are advanced variances that we'll be covering. So which variances do you have to keep in your mind? It's the material variances, uh, it's the labor variances, and it's the sale variances that you have to keep in your mind when it comes to a previous paper of MA because the advanced variances that we'll cover here connects with those material variances, connects with those labor variances, connects with those sales variances. So what are those advanced variances? Let me give you a quick idea. One variance by the name of material usage variance. Material usage variance will be further bifurcated into number one material mix variance, number two, material yield variance. Similarly, sales contrib volume profit variance, sales volume profit variance will be bifurcated into sales mix variance and sales quantity variance. So in order to understand the advanced variances, it is very important that you should understand the basic variance. You should be able to calculate the basic variance. So not only I will give you the revision of F2, not only we'll revise MA, but we will also cover F5 as well. So the revision of the previous area is my responsibility. The, uh, the, the, the teaching of the advanced area is my responsibility. Drafting of the answer is my responsibility. The only thing you have to do is follow the plans, follow the plans. So you might be thinking, what are those plans very soon? Very soon, I'll tell you the plans. <coughs> then decision making. This is one area you are not familiar with, which means the bases are not coming from F2 in this area. It includes topics which you uh, will see are new, which you will see are new. Similarly, uh, maybe there are certain areas that are coming with, uh, coming here from MA, MA2 paper, management accounting, uh, initial paper of management accounting, MA2 paper. I'll just take the names of the topic like relevant costing, like CVP analysis. These are the areas students have done in their foundation diploma paper. But if you haven't done that, don't worry, I'm here. 
Other topics include linear programming, risk and uncertainty, and pricing are the areas that uh, comes under decision making. Okay, this is more of calculative area. Vein variance, you will see theory. Budgeting, you will see theory. Here as well, there is theory, but in decision making, it's more about calculations. Okay, and the last is performance measurement. The heart of FI. For a human, how important the heart is. Similarly, for F5, this is the heart. This is the heart. Performance measurement. You must be really good in this area. And today, I want to disclose the examination. I'll disclose the paper today. This is the area that will show shortcoming in your examination. And that too in section C. <coughs> and that too in section C. I'll discuss what section C here means. But... This is one area that will show shortcoming in your paper. Now, this section, the last section, the heart of F5 includes three areas. It includes three areas. Number one, financial and non-financial performance. Financial, non-financial performance. Now, what you have covered in F2? Yes, you have the basis like financial ratios. Gross profit margin, net profit margin, percentage sales growth, percentage uh, 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 percent increase in cost, uh, then you have financial gearing, operational gearing, interest cover, current ratio, quick ratio, inventory days, receivable days, payable days. Yes, the basis are in your mind. So we will be using these financial ratios to look at the financial performance. Then you have also covered some area of non-financial performance, if you recall, balance scorecard, building block model, remember? So again, these models will come, but in more in-depth way, where through these we will also be covering non-financial performance. Non-financial performance area will be covered. This is very, very crucial thing for performance management paper, where students do struggle a lot, but don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I'll give my best to ensure that you become good in these areas. So the first is financial and non-financial performance. Second is divisional performance. <coughs> divisional performance, again, you have covered uh, in MA. Uh, like there are two important things to recall. ROI, return on investment. RI, uh, residual income. But again, the focus is not on calculation. The focus will be on what the numbers mean what the numbers mean similarly in financial non-financial also the focus is on what the numbers mean the focus is not to calculate gross profit margin net profit margin return on investment residual income the focus is what the numbers mean you have to explain what these numbers indicate okay and the last area that comes under this area is known as transfer pricing you are not aware about this area don't worry, it, is, it seems to be difficult, but I'll make sure that this becomes easy for you. So this is heart of F5. These are the areas of paper. This is how the paper will come. Now let's connect these two together. So let me tell you, this first section will come in section A of the paper, <coughs> will come in section B of the paper, but will not be tested in section C of the paper will not be tested in section C of the paper. So we will not be preparing the topics coming under this section for CRQs. Number two, budgeting can come in all the three areas, variance, all the three areas, decision making, all the three areas, performance measurement, all the three areas. But if you want me to predict at least one CRQ question, one CRQ question, so listen, my friends, one CRQ question, will come from performance measurement, will come from performance measurement. So <coughs> you can expect one question of CRQ from performance measurement and one section B question, one section B question can come from advanced costing technique, okay? So here we uh, have basically connected the paper pattern with the topics that will be tested in your examination. I hope this is clear so far and the mechanism is clear <coughs> to all of you, okay? Guys, what do you think? <coughs> clear everyone? Now, the most important thing is, why Wifi? Why Rizwan Mania? Why not another institute? Why not another teacher? Why Wifi only? 
This is important, my friends. Why Wi-Fi only? First of all, the reason is, the reason to choose Wi-Fi is what? Recorded sessions. Are these Zoom recordings? No. We are not stupid. We are not foolish, okay? These are animated lectures. These are animated recorded sessions where through the help of animations, we will explain you the concepts. It's like watching a movie, right? So these are recorded sessions through which we teach our students. We build the concept through animations. That's the unique part of Wi-Fi, okay? So 75% to 80% of the content is in form of recorded sessions. But how to cover these recorded sessions? We will not leave you alone. We are not selfish. We just we don't just take the fees and don't look at you. No. We will give you a planner in your paid WhatsApp groups. We'll give you a planner in your paid WhatsApp groups. And in, in, in uh, using those planners, you will cover the recorded session. You will be given with weekly targets. You will be given with weekly targets. And those weekly targets are the one where you'll be covering these topics. And those weekly topics you have to complete before the weekly live class. So we'll have six weekly live classes. The planner will mention that one, two, three, four, five areas you have to complete before the live class. So you will watch the recordings of those areas and you will be ready for the live classes, uh, the weekly live class I'm talking about. Which means the recorded sessions and live classes are in are integrated with each other, are integrated with each other, okay? Recorded sessions and live classes are integrated with each other. So you have to keep this in your mind that recorded sessions will be, uh, are important for you to watch and before the live classes, you have to complete those recordings and the planners of that are giving and the planners of those will be given to you earlier in your group. Remember, live classes are very important because we have separated recorded with live so that you can feel us. You get to know who Rizwan Mania is. Does the person actually exist or not? So for that, be part of the live sessions. There are e-notes that are topic-wise notes available. You have those topic-wise notes attached with each and every topic. If you want, you can download these notes. I would recommend to download all the topic notes and take a printout and compile and make a book for yourself, okay? Then we have a unique TTA model. What is Wi-Fi's TTA model? The first T of this model, the first T, listen to me very carefully. The first T of this TTA model is the, is the test yourself sections. Test yourself section. Now, what test yourself section means? The first T is test yourself. Test yourself section means that once you have done uh, one area or two areas or three areas on your portal, there will be one section by the name of test yourself where you have to examine yourself now, where you have to test yourself now. If you have covered one topic and you want to test your knowledge, so this is the section where you will check your knowledge, you will test yourself and this will be a time-based practice. Time management is crucial, very, 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 very crucial for the paper. So the focus will be to complete the question within the time frame that I have assigned for you people. So this test yourself will boost your confidence as to how you are performing. Second T of this TTA model is the testing platform we have. We have a similar testing platform as of ACCA where you can go there, you can solve the OTs, you can practice there in order to understand the testing environment of the paper. Third of this TTA model is A and A means <coughs> assignments. A means assignments. Now what assignments I'm talking about? What kind of assignments I'm talking about? Listen, after every live class, after every live class, we will give you an assignment which means six live class, six assignments. Six live class, six assignments will be given to you. You will be given one week's time to complete the assignment and submit us and submit us. So what we'll do, 
we will check your assignment, we will mark your assignment and we'll give you feedback on that. Because we once we'll check it, we'll give you the marks feedback on that. This is assignment area where your confidence will boost throughout two and a half months and you will improve slowly and gradually. So that is the unique model at Wifi by the name of TTA model. Test yourself, testing platform and assignments. Then mock. <clears throat> at the end of the session, there will be two mocks. We'll conduct two mocks. And those two mocks will be uh, the one where you will also have the debrief sessions of those mocks. Debrief sessions of those mocks and one mock out of two. One mock out of two is the one that will mark, will give you the feedback and will give you the comments where you went wrong. So there are two mock facility part of our course. Then the revision sessions. The last month, the November month is a revision month where we'll be conducting free revision sessions where there'll be a grand revision as well. So approximately this revision comprises of eight to nine hours of revision in the month of November. And let me tell you, these are all live sessions other than these live classes, okay? Last but not the least is teacher assistance. At WIFI, we don't leave you alone. So in our WhatsApp group, there are tutors, there are the assistant part of the groups. Tutors and assistant both are part of the group. These assistant will help you in your queries, will help you in your planning. These will be sending you the planners. And not only this, they will also track your performance. That's the best part of WIFI, where we track the performance of the student. Where we track the performance of the student and what tracking means, that is we actually tell you that this is the target you have and how much you have covered. So on a 15 day basis, we will send you the tracking sheets that will show you the performance, where you are going wrong, what is it, what needs to be done, how to improve. So tracking will be done. As I said, we don't leave students on their own. So this is the complete package that WIFI offers. And the last is our gamification model. Now, what gamification is? We'll share the details in our WhatsApp group as well. If you cover things on time according to targets, like for example, if you watch the recorded sessions on time, you will be assigned points. Live classes, you attend live class, you will be given points. For assignments, you'll be given points. For mock and passing the mock, you'll be given points. So we will be giving you points for each and every area, which means if your points exceed our uh, uh, targets, so then you will be getting rewards from that. So at the end of the term, after your result comes out, we will collect your points, we'll count your points, and after those points, you'll be given discounts in your future ACC examination papers from WIFI. So that is the gamification model we have because we want you to transform your learning into a game. And that's why we have assigned weightage and points for covering these on time. The details of all these things will be shared with you in your paid WhatsApp group because at WIFI, it's not about only selling the lectures. No, we care for you. We want you to pass. We want you to <coughs> become successful. And that's why we have designed this model for you people. An entire team of WIFI really works hard to ensure that you pass in your upcoming ACC exam. So I hope you understood the model. You understood the method, how we cover things. Guys, I hope this orientation would have given you the basics and things are clear that what the paper is and how we're we going to teach this paper. Now, if you want to ask any questions, you can ask questions in the chat box. <clears throat> okay, how many devices to access is not relevant to my area. You can ask the customer support for that. Any other thing that you need to ask, guys? Yes or no? Live sessions will start from next week. Next week. As we will share you the planner, we'll, uh, in that planner, the dates of the live class will be mentioned. Yes, if you cannot take the live sessions, the recordings of the live sessions will be available on the portal. The timing and the days of the live classes, again, will be shared with you guys 
through the planner. Okay. Now, those students who now want to be part of WIFI, want to take admission from us. So, this is the number of our support team. If you want to enroll in my upcoming December 23 batch of PM and want to be successful with WIFI, so you can join our batch. This is the number of our support team. Just message them. Just enroll yourself. Just come into my batch and then you see how helpful things will be become for you and hopefully you will pass. For testing platform, uh, yes, I will update the team and they will give you the access of that as well. If you covered F2 way back in 2016, no need to revise F2. Whatever content is available on my portal, just watch that. Revision will be done. No revision package. It's a regular batch right now. Revision session will start later on in the month of November. If you missed the live class, you can watch the recordings. Live class schedule will be, will be shared with you guys in, uh, uh, in, in the planner that we'll share with you. Okay. So guys, for enrollment, you can contact this number. Just give me a quick feedback. How was today's session? Six live classes. Yes, without revision classes. With revision, there are nine sessions, live sessions. Planner will be updated and shared with you by tomorrow, Max. So guys, how was the session today? Useful, effective, understood. So are you confident that you took the admission at the right place? And if you are still thinking, I'm sure now you have the clarity here. So my friends, Follow my plans. Now, when I say what are the plans, from now in the group, we'll share the planner with you. On a constant basis, I will be guiding you. Make sure you follow the instructions in the WhatsApp group. Make sure you pin this WhatsApp group at the top for any message that is, that is being delivered by me in the group. You have to follow that. Okay? Thank you very much, guys, for once again trusting with me. I hope we will fulfill what you expect from us. See you all in the first upcoming live session next week. Until then, take care and we'll see you soon in the live sessions. And the planner will be shared with you by tomorrow. From tomorrow, you have to start watching the recorded sessions according to the plan that I will give you. All the resources will be given to you. Don't worry. Everything will be cleared. And by tomorrow, you will have access to each and everything and then start your studies from tomorrow. Try to fulfill the deadlines and see you very soon in my upcoming first class next week of PM. That will be our official class of our paid student. Those who want to enroll, don't get confused. Don't wait. Don't uh, hesitate to join the batch. Once you will do, you won't regret it. Thank you very much. Rizwan Mania signing off from Wifi.